We now move on to the accounting period. It is necessary for us to appreciate the concept of the accounting period or the financial year. The only way in which we can absolutely be sure of the success or otherwise of a particular business is to gain an idea of its net worth at the beginning of its life and the net worth at the end of its life and compare the two. This would however be impractical because a business could continue for hundreds of years. So when we talk about the accounting period, remember, it doesn't necessarily mean that the financial year goes from the 1st of January and that it ends on the 31st of December. Any business can decide at any particular point in time from where to where their financial year is going to go. So the life of the business therefore gets divided up to into different periods, usually one year, and the financial results of those periods can be compared to identify whether or not the business is in, on a successful path or not. It is not necessary for the business to use the calendar year like I just said, from January to December. They may use any starting or ending date if the business decides to start the financial record keeping on the 1st of March, then the period for which the financial year are prepared will be at the end of on, on the 28th of Feb. If the period begins the 1st of July 2001, it will end on the 30th of June 2002. So once again, you can see it doesn't specifically go from January to December. The date of decision by the business is referred to as the accounting period or the financial year as opposed to the calendar year. So by definition now, what is a financial period? The period of time chosen by a business for the calculation of its net profit, usually one year, the business can determine the start and the end of that financial year. Now, if we look at the operating financing and the investing activities, what is that all about? It's, very, it is, it's always necessary to identify the difference between these main groups of activities for the business. That is in order to interpret the financial statements correctly. And every single transaction in the business can be classified into one of these broad groups of activities. So the operating activities, what are these? Activities in operating the business, that is, the buying and selling of goods, the paying of wages, etc. That would fall under your operating activities. Now, financing activities basically explains itself. What is that all about? If you finance a business, what is that all about? That is the activities in raising funds for the business. It either comes from the owner or from lenders. The owner can provide capital, that's the capital contribution, borrow front funds from lenders, repay loans, or pay or owe interest. Note that the definition of investing in this case is used in a broad sense. For example, investing in land and buildings and other fixed assets. By using these fixed assets, the business will enable itself to operate and thereby earn a profit. Okay, now if we look at the format of the income statement, we're first going to discuss the whole income statement, the whole breakdown of the income statement, and then we'll show you the actual income statement, what it looks like. What did we calculate in the trading account? We said that it was sales less our cost of sales to give us our gross profit. We then took the gross profit and we added the income to give us our gross operating income. We then take the gross operating income, we subtract all our operating expenses to give us our operating profit. Now remember, your operating profit plus your interest income. Now what's that all about? Your interest income deals with all the interest that you've earned in, in investments that you have made. So remember, interest income is the umbrella body. But what falls under interest income, you will see when we do the actual notes, what am I talking about? So coming back to the slide, we say it's our operating profit plus our interest income interest on investments is equal to profit before interest or expense or financing cost. Now what happens to that figure? Your profit before your interest expense or your financing cost minus your interest expense or your financing cost will then give you your net profit for the year. But remember, that could also be a net loss. Now the net sales figures is also used to determine the gross profit. The net sales consist of your total sales, which was made up out of your cash and your credit sales, minus your debtors allowances. Remember, we did exactly that when we did the trading account. It was sales minus debtors allowances to give you your turnover. 
The interest income and the interest expense are shown below in the financial statements as separate notes. So very important to take note of that. Note one and two is the two notes to your income statement. So your interest income then is shown separately in the income statement because it consists of income earned from outside sources. That means banks and other financial st uh, in institutes and not income obtained from normal business operations. Remember we spoke about the operating activities? So you can clearly see that the interest that you have earned is not an operating activity. It's not as a, as a result of buying and selling of goods, but rather as an investment in outside institutes. The interest income is shown as a note, note number one, under the notes to the financial statements. Okay, if we look at the interest expense, that is also shown as a separate note in the income statement because this ex expense is not a normal operating expense, such as our stationary repairs. The interest expense is paid to the persons or institutions who lend money to the business. The interest expense is shown as note number two under the notes to the financial statements. The operating profit shows the profit derived from business operations. Remember, interest income is added to this figure and interest expense is subtracted, is subtracted, resulting in a net profit or loss. An income statement can be drawn up from the final accounts in the general ledger or from the nominal accounts section of the post-adjustment trial balance. We're now going to specifically to go, to go and look at what the income statement look like. You start off with your sales. Sales, less cost of sales. Now, important feature, note that the cost of sales appears in brackets. Why is that? Because we are deducting that amount. And that would then give us our gross profit for the year. Then what do we do? We take that gross profit and we add the income from the services rendered. Remember, it's very important that when I look at a business, I have to look and see whether this is a trading or a service business. Now, it can also happen that it's a combination, that it's both a trading and a service business. So therefore, you then have to go and add your additional income. So in this case, we had commission income and we had fee income. So we add that to the gross profit to give us our other operating income. So clearly now, as a reader of this financial statement, you can clearly see that my other operating income amounted to a certain amount. What is this? What is my other operating income? It is made up of my rent income, discount received, and bad debts recovered. Okay, now note, these items, we've discussed them. Remember, we spoke about the bad debts recovered in our prior lessons, so you know exactly where, the, where this information is coming from. What would all of this give us? It would now give us our gross operating income. The next thing that we have to do is we have to take our operating expenses, once again, like Ashraf said. If we subtract, you can clearly see that the total of that is presented in brackets. So there is the whole list. You, we can get an endless list. Those are not the only ones. There could be any other expenses as well. So we'll total all the expenses and we, so we will subtract the operating expenses from the gross operating income. Okay, so what happens now? Once all, all these expenses are deducted, you are left now with an operating profit or a loss. How would you know it's a loss? If that figure is a negative and it appears in a bracket, that would indicate to you, the reader, that this, this business for this financial period under review had generated a loss rather than a profit. Then what did we do? Remember, you'll take note now, if you look on, on, on that income statement, that there is a number one. We spoke about the first two notes of the income statement. So interest income is added to that operating profit. So therefore we have to go and look at the breakdown, which we will do. So we add the interest income to give us our profit before the interest expense. Okay, so after having brought in your interest income, you are now left with your profit or loss before interest expense. That means your financing cost. And that gives rise to, to, to note number two. And what is that? your interest expense or your financing cost. You would subtract it and therefore you would end off with your final figure which is your net profit or loss for the year. Now take a special look at one, two and seven. It's telling you that there's information regarding that in the notes to the financial statements.